everyone and welcome back to my channel today's episode is going to be all about time planning now a time plan helps you to plan and keep organized whenever you're making more than one dish and it shows your knowledge of cooking skills now my students oftentimes ask me do they have to do the time plan or why is the time plan even important now let's look at it this way let's say that we're going on a journey we're taking a trip and the destination is SBA 1 or any SBA for that matter. Now, before you even decide to go on the trip, you need to have a passport. And in this case, let's call the passport or recipes, right? You can't go anywhere outside of the country without a passport. So in the same breath, we cannot do anything without our recipes. So now that we have our recipes, we have an idea of what we're going to prepare. We're at the destination. It's time for the SBA. But now that we're there, where are we going to go how are we going to get there what do we need so that's where the time plan comes in the time plan is our map we can't do anything without the time plan what you are seeing now is the first page of the time plan now what the first thing that you would have to do is to select the subject area for which you're writing the time plan and in this case it's food nutrition and health and the second thing you are required to do is to fill out some basic information about yourself including your name, the name of the center, your teacher's name, your registration number, your center number, and of course the territory. And then the final thing that you're required to do is to write the SBA question in its entirety. So now we're moving on to part A of the time plan. Now this is the choice of work section. So as you can see, it has three columns. And the first column being activity or dishes chosen. This is where you would include the name of all the dishes that you are going to prepare. And I've given you some examples. So in this column, I put fruit salad, poached eggs, and French toast. Now, moving on to the second column, where it has the main ingredients with quantities, equipment, and materials needed. This is where you're going to write all the ingredients that you're going to use to make the particular dish along with the tools and equipment that you will need. Now, sometimes I tell my students not to include the tools and equipment because they are going to be rewriting it in part C of the time plan. So I went ahead and I filled in the second column for example purposes only. So if you look closely, you can see that I put the measurement along with the name of the ingredient and I also put the tools that I will be using to make the fruit salad. Now moving on to the third column, it says do not write in this column, that's for examiner use only. Okay, guidelines for writing part A of the time plan. Number one, always state the method of cooking when writing the name of the dish. Number two, avoid using phrases such as a dash off or a pinch off. Number three, garnishes and decorations to be used may be listed in the second column. And number four, name the dishes in the order given by the question. Now that we have completed part A of the time plan, we can move on to part B. Now in the first column, you're required to write the time, meaning how long it will take you to perform a task. In the second column, this is where you will write the order of your work along with oven management and methods of cooking. Now I went ahead and I did an example for you. So in the time slot, I put from 8 o'clock to 8.20 and in this time, I put that I will prepare self, gather and wash tools and equipment, organize work area, peel, chop and dice fruits and vegetables and set aside and of course, preheat the oven to 180 degrees Celsius. You may change it if you so desire. This is just for example purposes. Now, I also gave another example and this is for 8.20 to 8.40. And basically what I did was to explain how I would prepare egg muffins now this would be from one of the first items that would be prepared after organizing my work area so if you notice I start off by saying that I'm going to prepare egg muffins now if you're not going to do egg muffins you can just simply write the name of the dish that you are going to do of course it is up to you to look at the dishes that you have selected 
and select the order in which you are going to write the time plan. So you don't necessarily have to start off with the egg muffins. I normally advise my students to start off using the items that take the longest time to cook or to start off with items that have to be prepared in the oven or be placed in the refrigerator to save on time. Also, you will notice that in the example that I am sharing with you now, I state that I'm going to tidy work area at the end of it. Guidelines for writing part B of the time plan. Number one, show that you know the methods. You need to know the methods the dishes are made by. For example, dry fry, shallow fry, creaming method, grilling, poaching, etc. Number two, show that you know when a mixture is ready. A knowledgeable cook knows when the ingredients are cooked or ready enough to go on to the next stage of the recipe. For example, you may say, rub fat into flour until it looks like breadcrumbs. Number three, remember to check the time you started to cook the food. Number four, show that you tested for doneness. And number five, remember to state that you remove the items from the stove or oven. Please don't let them burn. <laughs> now we have made it to part C of the time plan. We're almost finished. Praise Jesus. <laughs> now, as you can see, there are four columns in which you must complete. The first column being for groceries. The second column being for vegetables and fruit. The third column being for special tools and equipment. And the fourth column for meat and fish. Now we're going to go through each column so that you have a better understanding of what it is that you're supposed to put exactly in each. Now for the first column, groceries. These items would be items that you would typically find in the supermarket uh, on the shelf items. So for example, salt, flour, corned beef, uh, sausages, stuff like those would go under groceries. Under vegetables and fruit, you would put all your fresh vegetables that you're going to be using in your dishes. So for example, onion, sweet pepper, lettuce, um, broccoli, stuff like that. And then under meat and fish, you would put all the meat and fish items that you will use. Pretty self-explanatory. And under special tools and equipment, this is where you give an outline of the tools and equipment that you're going to be using to prepare your dish. Now, as it relates to the quantities of the items that you're going to put in each column, you're not going to necessarily just put the name of the ingredient and call it a day. Unfortunately, you're going to have to do some calculations. So let's say, for example, under groceries, you're using salt. Now, you're not going to put one bag of salt. You're going to have to revisit part A of the time plan and calculate the total amount of salt that you're going to be using in all of your dishes. So let's say you're creating three different dishes and you use one teaspoon of salt in the first dish. One teaspoon of salt in the second dish and a half teaspoon in the third dish you would have to total those together and that would give you two and a half teaspoons so in the column you would write two and a half teaspoons of salt so you will have to go through part a of the time plan and do this for all of your ingredients and that's basically it you're finished and of course the column to the right of the time plan as always it says do not write in this column this is where your examiner is going to put her little corrections or markings or details of what it is that you have on your time plan and we're finished we are finished